What if I told you that the Roman Empire was hiding some shocking secrets? Secrets so crazy you'll be confused. Are you ready? Let's start! Number 10. Intricate Sewer System Ancient Rome boasted an ingenious sewer system known as the Cloaca Maxima, a remarkable engineering marvel. Constructed around 600 BC, this system was a testament to Roman innovation. Its primary function was to efficiently manage the city's waste and drainage, contributing significantly to public health. The Cloaca Maxima comprised a network of channels and tunnels built using stone, bricks, and arches. It collected wastewater and runoff from fountains, baths, and homes, guiding it away from populated areas into the Tiber River. This strategic design curbed the risk of flooding and minimized the spread of diseases caused by stagnant water. The sewers underwent continuous maintenance and expansion, showcasing the Romans' commitment to sanitation. Despite being an ancient creation, the engineering principles behind the Cloaca Maxima remain influential today. Its success lies in its efficient functionality, reflecting the Romans' foresight in addressing urban sanitation needs, leaving a lasting legacy in the realm of public health and civil engineering. Number 9. Crazy Chariot Racing Fandom Ancient Rome's chariot racing wasn't just a sport, it was a feverish obsession that often tipped into chaos. The racing teams, or factions, commanded ardent followings akin to modern sports teams. These factions, like the Blues, Greens, Reds, and Whites, were more than just sporting clubs, they became powerful social and political entities. Fans' loyalty ran deep, shaping identities and fueling fierce rivalries. The charioteers themselves were celebrities, with passionate supporters placing bets and wearing their faction's colors proudly. Such fervor, however, led to frequent clashes between rival factions. The infamous Circus Maximus hosted these races, drawing massive crowds where emotions ran high. The zeal spilled into the streets, resulting in riots and violence that sometimes required military intervention. The intense devotion to chariot racing reflected broader societal tensions, with factions representing different classes and ideologies. Despite the chaos it occasionally incited, chariot racing remained an integral part of Roman culture for centuries, showcasing both the passion and volatility of ancient Roman society. Number 8. Emperor Worship Ancient Rome witnessed a peculiar phenomenon, the deification and enforced worship of emperors posthumously. Emperors, upon death, were often elevated to divine status, becoming objects of veneration. Refusal to honor them sometimes led to dire consequences, especially under authoritarian rulers. The practice stemmed from the belief that emperors possessed godlike qualities and were essential for the well-being of the empire. Those who failed to pay homage risked severe penalties, including exile or even death. Emperors like Caligula and Domitian exemplified this trend, demanding absolute allegiance akin to worship. While not all emperors enforced this reverence to the same extent, the cult of emperor worship persisted, ingrained in Roman society as a symbol of power and authority. This practice, while controversial, played a pivotal role in shaping the dynamics between rulers and the governed in ancient Rome, showcasing the intertwining of political power and divine authority in the empire's governance. Number 7. Toilet Habits Ancient Romans had unique and surprising habits when it came to their toilets. Unlike modern individual bathrooms, they used communal toilets called latrines. These latrines were shared spaces where multiple people sat together. Instead of toilet paper, Romans used sponges attached to sticks to clean themselves after using the facilities. What's astonishing is that these sponges were communal too. They were shared among users and kept in a bucket of vinegar or salt water between uses. This practice might seem unhygienic by today's standards, but it was the norm for Romans. The vinegar or salt water was supposed to clean the sponge, but it was definitely a different approach to personal hygiene. This communal system might raise eyebrows now, but for the Romans, it was a practical way of managing hygiene in public restrooms. It's a fascinating insight into how different cultures throughout history have approached everyday tasks, even something as basic as using the restroom. Number 6. Aqueducts and Water Supply Ancient Rome boasted an ingenious water supply system centered around its remarkable aqueducts. These awe-inspiring structures were a testament to Roman engineering prowess, spanning vast distances, sometimes reaching up to 60 miles, to channel water into the city. Constructed primarily using stone, brick, and concrete, these aqueducts relied on gravity to transport water from distant sources, often hills or mountains, to the heart of Rome. 
The arches, a defining feature, supported these channels, demonstrating unparalleled architectural skill. These aqueducts weren't merely functional, they were a symbol of Roman innovation, showcasing sophisticated engineering techniques and meticulous planning. The water they provided catered not only to public baths and fountains but also to private residences, highlighting their widespread utility. The complexity and scale of these aqueducts remain a testament to Rome's commitment to urban development and technological advancement, serving as a blueprint for future civilizations and harnessing natural resources for urban growth and sustainability. Number 5. Gladiator School and Fame Ancient Rome was a place where gladiators, often captured warriors or slaves, found an unexpected path to fame and fortune. Trained in specialized schools, these fighters battled in arenas for entertainment. Surprisingly, many became household names, achieving celebrity status akin to today's sports stars. Some gladiators even endorsed products, leveraging their popularity for wealth. Their fame transcended boundaries, admired for their skills and bravery. Successful fighters gained riches, admiration, and even freedom, flipping their destinies from captivity to acclaim. Gladiators held diverse backgrounds and abilities, from former soldiers to criminals, all vying for the audience's favor. Their status as entertainers gave them a unique social standing, sometimes mingling with elite circles. The gladiatorial games were a spectacle intertwined with politics and society, where these warriors became icons, leaving a lasting mark on ancient Rome's cultural fabric. Number 4. The Role of Vestal Virgins The Vestal Virgins held a pivotal role in ancient Rome as priestesses devoted to Vesta, the revered goddess of the hearth. Their duty centered on safeguarding the perpetual flame symbolizing the city's vitality and prosperity. Chosen at a tender age, these women pledged 30 years of celibacy to their sacred duty. The consequences of violating this vow were grave. If a Vestal Virgin strayed from her celibacy, the penalty was severe, typically culminating in being buried alive. This strict punishment aimed to uphold the societal reverence for purity and the sanctity of the flame they guarded. Despite the harsh consequences, the Vestal Virgins commanded immense respect and wielded significant influence in Roman society. Their status granted them privileges such as the right to own property, exemption from certain societal obligations, and the authority to bear witness in legal matters. Their role was crucial, as the eternal flame they protected was believed to secure Rome's well-being. This veneration and fear surrounding their chastity underscored their importance and the deep-rooted beliefs in the link between the purity of the Vestals and the prosperity of Rome itself. Number 3. Fascination with Garum Ancient Rome had a surprising obsession with Garum, a fermented fish sauce that might raise eyebrows today but held a prestigious place in their culinary world. This concoction, made from fermented fish guts, salt, and sometimes herbs, wasn't just a condiment but a cornerstone of Roman cuisine. Garum production was an elaborate process. Fish guts were layered with salt in barrels, left to ferment in the sun for weeks or months, and then strained to obtain the prized sauce. Its pungent aroma might not appeal to modern tastes, but Romans adored it, using garum liberally in various dishes. It wasn't merely a seasoning, it showcased the diverse flavors of the era, providing a salty, umami-rich punch to soups, stews, and even desserts. Surprisingly, garum was not limited to the elite. It was a staple across all social classes, showcasing its widespread popularity. This fish sauce held such significance that garum factories were established in coastal regions to meet the colossal demand. Despite its prominence, the recipe for the perfect garum has been lost to history, leaving us intrigued by this ancient Roman culinary delight. Number 2. Lead in Daily Life Ancient Rome, a pinnacle of civilization, harbored a lesser-known peril within its daily life the pervasive use of lead. Romans employed lead in various aspects, including water pipes and cookware, unaware of its potential hazards. Historians speculate that this widespread exposure might have contributed to health problems among the populace. Lead poisoning, linked to the use of this metal, could have inflicted severe neurological damage, leading to cognitive impairments and developmental issues, especially in children. Some even argue that the decline of the empire might have been influenced by this unwitting poisoning, as Lead's toxic effects could have affected decision-making and contributed to societal challenges. Despite the remarkable achievements of ancient Rome, this seemingly innocuous material could have been an insidious factor in its downfall, exemplifying the unexpected consequences of seemingly harmless practices in history.
Number 1. Vomitorium's Misconception Ancient Rome holds many surprising secrets, and the misconception about vomitorium stands out. Contrary to popular belief, these weren't places for Romans to purge food during feasts. Instead, they served as rapid exit passages in amphitheaters and stadiums. The name vomitorium originated from the Latin word vomera, meaning to spew out. These passages allowed massive crowds to exit swiftly and efficiently after events, resembling a stream of people pouring out. These walkways facilitated the smooth flow of thousands leaving the venues, preventing congestion and potential chaos. The misconception likely arose due to historical misunderstandings or misinterpretations. In reality, Romans didn't use these spaces for indulging in excessive eating followed by purging, as commonly depicted in modern portrayals. Understanding the true purpose of vomitoriums sheds light on the ingenious architectural and crowd management techniques employed in ancient Roman entertainment venues. Don't forget to like our video and subscribe to our channel to be informed about new videos.